Now at five, as we wrap up one of the most violent years in the city of Portland, a look at plans to reduce gun violence in 2021. Plus an update on the Nashville Christmas explosion, authorities searching the home of a man who may be connected to the bombing, and millions of Americans could lose unemployment benefits tonight, where things stand with the coronavirus relief bill. This is KGW News at five. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Pat Doris. Portland police say it will take community action to reduce gun violence. We're coming to the end of one of the most violent, deadliest years in the city in the last three decades. KGW's Galen Etlin takes a look at the impact and what can be done. Scenes like this are getting old to a lot of Portlanders. Christmas week, Jeremy Jeffries went to the hospital, shot multiple times in his car. I don't know how he managed to do it, but he pulled over, just parked his car very calmly and immediately grabbed his stomach. Police think he was mistaken for someone else. Saw his vehicle, assumed it was belonged to rivals and started shooting at it. His girlfriend, Empelia Manuel, is thankful he'll survive. It's scary to think about how Portland has changed so much. That's just one example. On Christmas Eve, a shattered TriMet bus window in Northeast showed a near miss for a passenger almost shot. Earlier in December, a woman died near Emanuel Hospital, murdered in front of her husband. And it went on for a while. You could still smell the gunfire in the air. A terrible 2020. Lieutenant Greg Pashley spoke about Portland's more than 850 reported shootings this year, more than double last year. And the number of bullets that must have been flying around our uh, neighborhoods, our city streets, our sidewalks, it is, uh, it's awful. Pashley says 225 people were shot, contributing in part to the city's more than 50 homicides of 2020. Mike Arthur was number 50, robbed, shot, and killed in December. Neighbors and families of victims are left to feel the lasting impact of those bullets. He's not someone you need to take from if you need. He's, he has spent his whole life giving to the community. I don't know how many more people have got to die. I don't know how many shots, more shots have got to be fired before something is done to change, literally disrupt this trajectory. That change will not come easy. Portland's gun violence reduction team was defunded during the summer's racial protests, accused of profiling people of color. Chief Chuck Lavelle disagrees. We cannot lose sight of the fact that these are human beings who have died. The Bureau's plans to address gun violence are up in the air, instead encouraging a community approach. Social services, government organizations, non-government organizations, church-based, so that people feel as if they have support and they have options other than to act out violently. This is an astronomical spike. Sergeant Kenneth Dolio spent the last 19 years working with the gun violence reduction team. He says many shootings are gang related, some with innocent people caught in the middle. They're all connected and some of these connections don't just go back like for a few weeks or a few months, but they go back years and years. And as bullets fly, Ampelia Manuel hopes for that change so others don't end up hurt like Jeremy Jeffries. I'm just thankful that, you know, it could have ended really bad. The bullet that just keeps going. I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. Now an update on the Portland police officer injured Thursday night. Officers were called to the 76 gas station on Southeast Powell for a report of a stolen pickup truck. When they tried to stop the truck, the driver rammed Officer Jennifer Pierce and drove off. She fractured her pelvis and is still in the hospital tonight. Police say Pierce, a 15-year veteran, fired her gun during the incident. It is not clear if she hit anyone. The truck was found abandoned about an hour later. The two people believed to be inside were gone and police still have not found them. Anyone with information is asked to call Portland Police. Some positive news tonight on the pandemic front. Today, the Oregon Health Authority reported no new deaths as they also reported one of the lowest case counts that we've seen in several weeks at 612. This is only the fourth time in recent weeks the daily total is below 1,000. The numbers reported today were actually collected yesterday, so they may be a bit lower because of the holiday. But as you can see from the graph, the case numbers there on the right are starting to trend down. Governor Kate Brown has credited Oregonians with scaling back holiday plans to help avoid a surge. Here's an interesting fact. Oregon is the only state in the nation where your dentist is authorized to give a vaccine other than the flu shot. Christelle Kumwe introduces us to the first dentist in Oregon to give a COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Ryan Thrower graduated from the School of Dentistry at Oregon Health and Science University last spring. I wanted to be a dentist to have someone that 
little girls and little brown boys could look up to and say, oh my gosh, that's attainable and I want to do that one day. Last year, OHSU pushed lawmakers to allow dentists to administer any vaccine to any age, the only state doing so. Dr. Thrower received her vaccination training at OHSU when she was still a dental student. We were able to um, actually give injections to a, a plastic arm or a plastic portion of an arm. And then we were able to, at the end of that training, we were actually able to do our flu clinic on one another. She gave a flu shot to the dean of the School of Dentistry at the time. So she came to mind when OHSU needed a dentist present for Oregon's COVID-19 vaccine rollout. And we also felt like it was such a monumental and historic moment. On December 16th, Dr. Thrower gave Thank her first COVID-19 vaccine during Governor Kate Brown's press conference. OHSU Chief Medical Officer Renee Edwards announced the milestone. The first dose of COVID-19 vaccine at OHSU will be given by Ryan Thrower. Remarkably, she is the first dental resident in the United States and to our knowledge the world to administer a COVID-19 vaccine. I don't think any of us would have ever dreamed or imagined that we could play such a vital role in administering a life-changing vaccine in the year 2020. She gave the shot to Ansu Drame, a cardiovascular intensive care nurse, the first person at OHSU to get the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Dr. Thrower considers the moment historic. Not only because both Ansu and I are people of color, but because we are healthcare workers in completely different fields of healthcare, working together in tandem to do some good that could potentially be life saving. Right now, the only dentists in Oregon giving COVID vaccines are OHSU dentists who are giving those vaccines to OHSU healthcare workers and other frontline staff. About 100 community dentists also completed the dental vaccination training, but there is no timeline yet on when they will be able to administer the COVID-19 vaccine. I'm Christelle Kumwe for KGW News. Thank you, Christelle. Americans still do not know when they'll get stimulus checks from the federal government. If the $900 billion relief bill is not signed in the next seven hours or so, an estimated 12 million people will lose additional unemployment benefits immediately. Congress passed a bill, but President Trump said the stimulus checks were not big enough in that bill. An effort to increase the amount from $600 to $2,000 was voted down Thursday. House Democrats plan to try again with a vote on Monday. Turning now to weather with Chris McGinnis. We take a look out. Oh, on the mountain. Did you see that person just crashed right under the chairlift there, I think. But uh, hopefully they'll be all right. Chris, what are we looking at? For? <laughs> <laughs> I've done that so many times. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hopefully they're OK. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. A lot of people spend some time over the last 24 hours up on the mountain. Pat, check this shot out. This is a live ODOT camera right now at government camp. And you can see the traffic coming back over the mountain. That's the westbound traffic there. And it is obviously a busy night as folks uh, head back from a busy day up on the slopes. And why not, right? There's a live look from Timberline Lodge itself. It looks gorgeous there. It's just cloaked in white. A fresh, I don't know, 9, nine to 12 inches of snow. Pretty common in the Cascades at the Cascades Ski Resorts since last night. So a good start to a pretty good weekend up there. We are going to start to dry things out a little bit, though. And with that in mind, I do think we finally have some sunshine back in our forecast on Sunday. More on that in a second. Let's give you one more live camera. For this one, we head out to Oregon's Veterans Home in the Dalles. This is our camera in, uh, on, uh, well, in the Dalles, pointed west, and you can still see the snow on the ground there. The temperatures have come up above the freezing mark in the gorge. Areas that saw snow last night and this morning, we're starting to see a little thawing, some melting, and that's going to set the stage for some fog or possibly some freezing fog on the east end of the gorge. So watch out for that tonight. In terms of the rain, we're not done with that. Radar over the last three hours still showing some showers here across parts of the region. Right now, we've got one rolling through Lake Oswego and Oregon City pushing on off to the east. Another batch of showers, a much larger batch of showers set to come ashore here along the Oregon coast. So with that in mind, uh, don't put away the rain gear just yet. We're going to need it for a few more hours tonight. It's 49 at PDX with a south breeze. Pat, I think we're done with the rain and the snow tonight, and then we get a chance to dry things out for a couple of days before we get wet again. Maybe really wet in the extended forecast. We'll check that out in just a little bit. All right, thank you, Chris. We'll look forward to that. 
In Hood River, the natural gas should be flowing again and warming homes on this chilly day. Thousands lost their service last Sunday when a driver crashed into a major distribution point last weekend along Highway 14. That forced the shutdown of a major gas pipeline serving White Salmon, Odell and Hood River. About 100 Northwest Natural employees worked today to finish fixing the problems. Well, here's a positive update. The Oregon Zoo reopened today. The zoo has been closed to daytime visitors for the past month. But now it is offering limited attendance each week, Fridays through Sundays. You know, I think we're all craving a little bit of that sense of normalcy, and that's what we provide here. You know, it's, it's a chance to get out and make that connection with the natural world, you know, right here in the heart of the city. So we're really excited. You will need to get your tickets online in advance to reserve a time to visit. Masks are required for everyone older than the age of five.